Good morning. Welcome to St. Catherine's Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Today is the second Sunday before Advent, so soon the Advent season is going to begin. So let us prepare ourselves to meet our Almighty God Jesus Christ. He's going to come as a child in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Let us join with Adeline to sing a lovely song. Oh, when the saints go marching in Let us pray the prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments, Hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray the prayer of confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed through our negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. The collect for today, the second Sunday before Advent. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and hers of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves, even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Elizabeth is going to read our first reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Our reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, the day of the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labour pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 35, verse 1 to 10. Contend, Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up shield and armour, arise and come to my aid. Brandish spear and javelin against those who pursue me. Say to me, I am your salvation. May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame. May those who plot my ruin be turned back in dismay. May they be like chaff before the wind, with the angel of the Lord driving them away. May, may their path be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. Since they hid their net for me without cause, and dug a pit for me. May ruin overtake them by surprise. May, may the net they hid entangle them. May they fall into the pit to their ruin. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. My whole being will exclaim, Who is like you, Lord? You rescue the poor from those 
to strengthen them, the poor and needy from those who rob them. Thank you. Thank you. verses 14 to 30. Again it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on a journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one who had two bags of gold gained two bags more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, 
Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. But the man, the man with the two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and I went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So he took the bag of gold from him and gave it to the one who has had ten bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even when they, even what they have will be taken from them. And he threw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Dr. Peter Dooley is going to preach the word of God to us this morning. Welcome, Dr. Peter. Our Gospel reading this morning is set in Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus is speaking about the end of the age and the coming day of the Lord. In the previous chapter, he warned of his second coming at a day and hour which even he didn't know, but only his father. The story of the wise and foolish virgins was a reminder that all should keep watch and be ready for his return. In the parable of the talents, he taught about the work in which all should be involved as they and as we wait for his return. A simple opening point for clarification relates to the word talent. The term was used at the time of Jesus as a unit of weight of money of precious metals such as gold and silver. Some have estimated it as about 75 pounds or just under 35 kilograms. Others have estimated it higher. Either way, it was a significant amount of money. From another point of view, it has been described as what a labourer could earn in 15 years, say, or even 20. Once again, either way, it was a significant amount of money. So the picture we have here is one of the kingdom of heaven being like a wealthy man going on a long journey. And before he leaves, he gives his three servants different amounts of money denominated as talents, which they are expected to make work. Will they be successful in the use of the money left in their charge? Not sure if you've read the book written by Timothy Keller, or Tim Keller, entitled Counterfeit Gods, but if not, it's well worth reading. He has written that two of the great lies within our Western culture are that if you work hard, you can be anything you want to be. And more than that, you can be the best in the world. Well, if you give it some thought, both are patently untrue and are lies which come out of the world's misguided sense of success. He goes on and adds, more than idols, personal success and achievement lead to a sense that we ourselves are God. To be the very best at what you do, to be at the top of the heap, means no one is like you. You are supreme. Well, this was not Jesus' idea of success as found in this passage. The first servant worked hard with the money left him, five talents, 
and he doubled the original amount of money given and he was commended by the master. The second, given two talents, also doubled the amount of money given to him and was also commended by the master. The problem, however, was with the third servant who buried the money in a safe place and was deemed by the master to be wicked and lazy. At the very least, he could have put the money on deposit and earned interest on it, but he chose not to do so. More than that, he blamed his master for being a hard taskmaster. Who was Jesus talking to? Was it the leaders of the Jewish nation at the time? Was it his disciples, as Jesus knew? Jesus knew there would be a wait before he returned to earth again. Or was it us? Well, I believe it was addressed to all three groups of people. But first of all, let's consider the Jewish leaders, the scribes and the Pharisees, who had been given the law of Moses. They'd also been given the temple, the sign of God's presence among them. And if we go back to the time of Abraham, what was God's command to him? He said to Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives and your families, your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So the nation of, e of Israel was to be a blessing to all nations, but had singularly failed in its responsibilities. Its light should have shone forth to all of the nations around it. But like the third servant, the light had been buried and was hidden to most. What was Jesus commending to the nation, the disciples, and to us? To be the people God had called us to be. Yes, that. And success is a product of our work, but three things. The first is that we should do what God has called us to do. The second thing is we should work for the master, not for our own selfish purposes. And the third thing is we will be held accountable. It's quite a chilling prospect, isn't it? But it need not be so if we've got the right perspective on the task and responsibilities that we've been called to. An extremely unhelpful perspective is one found in the program The Apprentice with Alan Sugar. I'm sure many of you know it and with apologies to those who like it. As you probably know, at the end of each programme every week, a participant is let go with the words, you're fired. And if you survive to the end of a particular series of programmes, you hear the words, you're hired. And currently the, the reward is substantial with an investment of, for the successful candidate, of a quarter of a million pounds to start their own business. Well, the process suits some, but clearly mirrors success as measured today. And that wasn't Jesus's way. His leadership was clearly that of a servant as he bent down to wash the feet of his disciples. We also need to be careful of not falling into the trap of believing that God will set each and every one of us a final examination on the basis of which we will be commended by him and enter into his eternal kingdom. Why? Because it sets aside the larger context of the grace and love of God which are overflowing at every point. The Christian faith is not performance related, 
and the parable reminds us that work and success as defined by the world in which we live should not guide us rather we work at those things which God has called us to and we work for him and yes we will be held accountable accountable for what we've been responsible for or have avoided doing but the commendation is to do what he sets before us and the passage reminds us that not all of us are equal one servant had been given five talents another two talents and yet another a single talent I think you'll have realized by now that the word talent although referred to by Jesus as an amount of money has been understood for some time to be related to specific gifts or abilities and that's where we get the word talent from from this parable those who have gifts and abilities may have it in different forms some are academically able they do well at school and perhaps at university and they develop in later life professionally some have artistic ability which might be in art or drama or related activities some have sporting ability rewarded so much these days in professional football say in this country others have an ability to get on well with people others an aptitude within the business environment and I have friends who've been successful in this environment although they struggled at school with dyslexia say others have an ability to teach in any one of the areas that have already been mentioned others have the gift of hospitality and I'm sure you can think of many other skills, gifts and abilities. However, these gifts and abilities can be meaningfully employed in the service of God. And I'm really impressed by St Catherine's as many continue to work really hard to keep the church going over this lockdown period. And I include in this the wardens, treasurers and the PCC those with practical skills who keep on top of the church fabric, gardeners and cleaners, uniform groups and those with a heart for communicating the gospel to children, and those who clean the pews Sunday after Sunday after we've left the building. If we do those things for the glory of God and to the best of our ability, God will commend us for all we do of course we need to be careful of the spirit in which we do those things if we're cross or impatient with others that cannot glorify God and as Jesus reminded us we each and every one of us will be held accountable not only for what we do but also the spirit in which we do it let's pray shall we Heavenly Father thank you and the Lord Jesus for the teaching which is left us and enable us at the different stages in which we are, li we are in life at the moment to be able to glorify you in what we do. Help us to do what we can do to the best of our ability and when our energies fail help others to look to support us in these days. For Jesus sake we pray. Amen. Let's see the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Let's give thanks. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for creating us, for listening to every one of our prayers. Thank you for keeping us all protected and sheltered. Thank you for our family and all our friends. Thank you for building our creativity and helping us come up with new things to help us adapt to the current circumstances. Please help us to be kind, gentle and helpful. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is inside us and help us to keep it that way. Dear Lord, help us, help us Lord and guide us in all that we do to hold steadfast to your promises and to be still and know that you are God and you are always in control. We continue in prayer, dear Lord, that in spite of what may surround us, whether it is distress or peril or even all the negativity and every difficulty and every thing that might seem insurmountable, yet we are confident, Father, that whatever the circumstances may be, we are really confident that nothing can separate us from your love that is through Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray, Father, that you continue to keep us steadfast in your love, that we are grounded and rooted in you, Father, that we are able to shine as lights in this dark world, that we're able to continue to reflect Jesus wherever we go and we could be as people who are not only saying things, Father, but doing what you want us to, Father. Continue to keep all of these things in prayer, Father. We ask all of these things in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith. Heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Church news for this week. Please watch our online service through our church website www.sancatherineshd.org.uk. Our service can be viewed on live through Zoom. When we resume our Sunday service, please make sure you watch our service through Zoom. Please contact us for further details. Zoom Bible study. Come and join us. If you are interested, please contact Anne Swinglehurst and Juliet for further information. So every Wednesday from 7 to 8, we meet for our Zoom Bible study. Operation Christmas Child. So we send shoe boxes as a Christmas gift to children lives in different parts of the world. Today is the last day, so please bring your shoe boxes to our church or please call us or call Peggy and we will come and collect from your home. Please make your shoebox ready for collection. Today is the last day. Thank you very much for your interest.
to send gifts to children who lives in different parts of the world. The Lord be with you and also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for always being here and tuning in. Be gracious to you, the Lord.